All right, last month I made the Sauerkraut Kids Saga, which was a five-part series where I told you guys about this poor lad who smells like sauerkraut and my few interactions with him. You guys loved it, so uh, I thought I'd toss them all into one video. You guys love when I do this. You liked it with the Karen Saga. So here it is, the Sauerkraut Saga. Like the video if you enjoy, and uh, yeah, bye. So this story takes place when I was like eight, nine years old, and there was this park near my house, and I was just old enough to like go there and hang out, because my parents trusted me to be able to walk down there, and obviously it was very exciting for me, because I wanted to go to the park a lot, so I was on my way to the park to do what little kids do, pretend to have the force talk to myself, whatever kids do. Someone's like, oh, you talked to yourself when you were little? I mean, like, uh, use my imagination. Anyways, to get to the playground, you have to, like, run across this field. And I'm running across this field, and I see this kid that looks a year or two older than me inspecting something with a stick. And naturally, being a curious kid, I went over to see what it was, expecting it to be, like, a lizard or something. I don't know, maybe, like, a lump of worms. The way he was inspecting this thing with a stick, I just assumed it was something interesting because he was looking at it with the curiosity of someone, like, watching planet Earth for the very first time. They've never even heard of a polar bear before. And as I start getting closer, I'm confused because I start smelling sauerkraut. And, uh, my Oma, who I spent a ton of time with when I was younger, would always, like, make sauerkraut for dinner, so I was familiar with the smell as a food, but I had never smelt it on a person, so I started looking around, looking for it, and as I got closer, I realized it's coming off of him, which was weird. I didn't think people were supposed to smell like sauerkraut, but I just plugged my nose and got closer, and it got weirder, because what he was inspecting with this stick and staring at was, like, dried white dog poop. And so I just say, dude, what are you doing? Like that, not angrily, just curious. And he turns, looks at me, and says, Why does it matter? Let me play with the dog poop. Keep in mind, I was just asking. It's not like I really cared. So I take his anger as a sign to leave. So I turn around and leave, thinking, Knock yourself out, man. I don't want to be involved anyways. I've got no desire to be poking dog poop with a stick, so I'm gonna leave. If you're that angry about it, you do you. But I'm turning around and walking away, and I feel this, like, nerve go off, almost like someone's staring at me. Not literal nerve, but like, ugh, the heebie-jeebies. And I turn, and I see that he's coming at me with the stick that he was just poking the dog poop with, and he has the end that was poking the poop towards me. So I enact evasive maneuvers. I'm not trying to get touched with the poop stick. So I like jump out of the way and I grab the middle of the stick, not where the poop is touched, and I stick it into the ground. And so it goes into the dirt and he exclaims, my stick, as if I did something wrong. I'm just trying to defend myself here. You're trying to stab me with a poop stick like you're a booby trap in the Vietnam War. And, and I'm just trying to mind my business and go back to the slide after you told me to. I love how he acted offended, dude. If anything, I should have been offended. You were out here trying to make me patient zero. Give me some weird disease no doctor's ever heard of before. I don't want to be that guy. Oh, yeah, poor Ryan. He died because that dude stabbed him with the poop stick and he got the poop disease. No thanks. So, I don't know why this kid is trying to hit me with the stick or anything. And he says to let go. I say no. And I break the stick. I didn't really need to do that. I know some people will say it's mean, but if someone just tried to, like, stab you with a stick, you'd probably break it too, even if you think it was mean. I wouldn't have had to break the stick if he didn't try to stab me with his poop staff. You know, he's out here trying to be Gandalf the Brown, hit me with the you shall not pass gas ever again instead of not pass the corridor or whatever. If someone tries to hit you with their poop stick, I feel like you have the right to break it. Maybe I'm wrong for that. Someone in the comments let me know if I was justified to break the poop stick. But I break it, and he starts freaking out, saying that I'm going to pay for breaking that stick, whatever, da-da-da-da-da, I'm gonna be punished. I said da-da-da-da-da, everybody take their shot. Anyways, he starts going off about how I'm gonna rue the day that I broke this poop stick, so I say alright and start walking away. At this point, I think he's just ranting to himself, we'll just go our separate ways, and that'll be that. I don't know what you expect someone to do when you try to smack them with the poop stick. Of course they're going to break it and be mad, so just let me walk away and it's fine. So I keep going across this grass field over to these big slides that were at this park, and as I'm going, I can still smell sauerkraut. 
And so I look around me, not expecting to see a ginormous bratwurst standing there deliciously, but expecting to see this kid following me. And when I turn around, that's exactly what I see. And he's trying to, like, follow me slightly from a distance and hide, but he's trying to hide behind trees that are thinner than he is, so it's not working. So I see him and ask him, why are you following me? And he jumps out angrily and says, you broke my stick and I need to get you back for it. You have no idea how long I looked for a stick just like that and now it's broken. And I was really young, eight or nine years old, and I feel like around that time, you know, you, you have a stick that's your club, you have a stick that's your gun, like you just kind of are, are good at using your imagination. And I'll be honest, it was a lame stick, it wasn't even a cool stick that I broke. So I walk over to this tree, and on the ground is a stick that looks very similar, so I pick it up, and I look at the kid, and I say, just take this one. And he starts yelling that it's not the same one, it, it's not even close, he can't believe that I would even suggest that he use that one, da 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 da. I did it again, sorry guys. And so I look at him and say, so it has to be that stick. The one that I broke is the only stick that you're going to take. And he looks at me and completely seriously says yes. So I look at the broken stick on the ground that I broke that he had brought with him and laid out again, and I look back at him, and I look back at the stick, which is broken, and I look back at him and I say, well, that sucks, because guess what, ladies and gentlemen? I don't have the power to mend broken things. I'm a child. I can't unbreak a stick. I'm not a Jedi. I can't use my force powers to make it all mend together and everything be one with the force. That's not my forte, dude. I just have Lego Star Wars gameplay. I don't have the powers of the people in the background. And he gets all angry with that answer and says that he's going to follow me until I fix it. You can follow me until the cows come home. It's not going to make me a magician, but whatever. I guess this guy's just going to follow me now. I can't unbreak the stick. And I'm really confused if he knows it's impossible and he's just trying to be annoying or if he's just dumb because he's older than me. And I'm like, well, if I know that this can't be fixed, there's no way that you can't know it can't be fixed. But I keep walking to the slides, and sure enough, he is following me to the slides. Not much I can do about it at this point. I just decide I'm going to ignore him as long as I can, ride the slides, and leave. If Sauerkraut Boy is going to follow me, my stay at the park got a lot less enjoyable, so I'll just dip. So I get over to these slides, and he's still following me, and there's a little bit of a line, so I wait in line, he's behind me in line, we get to the front of the line, and I'm getting ready to go down the slide, and he, like, elbows me out of the way and cuts in front of me. And I'm gonna be honest, I just kinda let him go, cause at least that way I can lose him, so he slides down the slide, and I'm gonna let the kid behind me go, so that way, by the time he's coming back up to the slide, I'm going down, I'll leave, sauerkraut kid can't follow me, I think it's the perfect plan, so I let him go. And so the kid behind me steps up to the tube, sticks his head in to go down the slide and says, Ew, what's that smell? Obviously, it was a tube slide, so the smell of sauerkraut had been trapped, and I start laughing because I think it's funny. But instead of him going down the slide or whatever, I hear an angry roar from inside the slide, like a demon himself trying to, like, rise up out of the ground. And it's at that moment when I realize somehow Sauerkraut Kid is in the slide and somehow he heard me. Because like a fallout death claw coming out of the sewer, here comes Sauerkraut Kid climbing up the slide, screaming about how he doesn't smell and we need to stop laughing. And I'm not saying it's great to make fun of if people smell, all right? In retrospect, was it a little mean? Sure. But if you smell like sauerkraut and like you're in a tube slide and someone's not aware you smell like sauerkraut and they step up and go, ew, it smells, it's kind of funny. But it's also at the moment when he's coming up that I realize that he must have been waiting halfway down the slide to like wait for me specifically. And I'm sure it wasn't so that way we could have friendship bracelets made. I don't know if he's going to beat me up, I don't know if he's going to jump me or what, but I realize that if he gets to this top of the slide and I'm still hanging out there, it might be a problem. So he's nearing the slide, he's coming back up, and me and all the other kids that were waiting to get on the slide start running because this dude seems nuts. At least that's why all the other kids start running. I'm running because I realize that like he's probably coming for me. But think about it for all the other really, really little kids waiting in line. They just want to go down the slide. Someone goes down. Someone comes charging up from down the slide screaming and trying to grab someone. To be honest, I'm sure the really little kids probably never wanted to go on a slide again. They tell people this story. They're like, one time I was at a slide and a monster came out of the slide and started attacking people. 
whatever he comes up everyone's running away scattering and there's four large slides up here so when he gets up and i hear his footsteps running behind me i decide instead of trying to outrun him i'm just gonna go down a different slide so i run to the one that's the furthest away get in it and slide down and I can hear his footsteps coming. I don't know exactly how far away. I would say maybe like, I don't know, 20 feet behind, let's say. I wasn't an expert at judging distance, but I had a little bit of room in between him and me getting on the slide. And I'm going down the slide and I'm in this tube just thinking to myself like, I gotta get away, I gotta get away. I hit the bottom and instead of running, I turn around, jump on top of the tube slide and start climbing back up it. Going for a little bit of a Sly Cooper move where I, I just fastly climb something, just try to get out of the way so the enemy will be confused. And I hear him get to the bottom of the slide and he starts running. And at that point, I get to the top and I hide up there. And I can see that he's running around at the bottom of the slides, but I'm not down there. So I just kind of hide up there. And after five minutes of hiding, I assumed he had either moved on or like given up. So I was probably fine. So I come down and instead of going home, which would have been the smarter decision, I think, well, he's probably gone. So I go over to the playground, which was what I wanted to do anyways. So I'm on the playground minding my business and I had actually just gotten tall enough to do the monkey bars. So I'm doing the monkey bars and I'm like halfway through the monkey bars, setting world records, speed running this thing. I might have been new to it, but I was pretty quick. And as I'm in the middle of the monkey bars, I see some other kids looking over, like, kind of nervously. And I don't think anything of it. I think maybe it's their parents saying they gotta go or something. But then I can see one of them point. And then I start getting a little nervous. And after he points, I hear screaming, and I know what they were nervous about. Because I hear, you broke my stick, you broke my stick, you broke my stick. And I look over and it's sauerkraut. He hadn't left, bro. Somehow he had tracked me down again like a bloodhound. So I drop off the monkey bars and he's running at me. And I probably only got like 30 feet between me and him because I was on the monkey bars. So I start running. And I'm running for my life, dude. I don't know if Sauerkraut's gonna put me in, in some, some stew or something if he catches me. Who knows? And I'll give him a compliment. He was persistent. I feel like if I was in his shoes, I would have given up very quickly. I don't have the energy to, like, stay mad at someone to keep chasing them or stick around and keep looking for them. I would have given up, but he did not give up. He was chasing me for quite a while. I wouldn't even have been chasing someone in the first place, I guess. But he was looking for me for a bit, and he would not give up. But what I will say, what he uh, had in persistence, he lacked in athleticism. He was older than me and a bit taller, so realistically, it should have been easy for him to run me down. If you got longer legs, like, you, you got the speed advantage. You should be able to get quick with it, run as fast as you can. But my little legs, dude, were just in better shape than his or something. I don't know, but I kept gaining ground on him. And because I was gaining ground on him and I could tell that he was getting tired, I started getting cocky. So I turn around and I kind of start taunting him a bit. Keep in mind, he's chasing me. And I'm like, come on, slowpoke, come get me. What? You can't keep up? And he starts yelling back, trying to debate with me, saying that I should just stop running because if I stopped running, he could come get me. Yeah, I know, man. That's why I'm saying come catch up, Slowpoke. It's not, I'm gonna stop and make this a fair fight because you're bigger than me, dude. Why would I stop running? But he's trying to reason with me, being like, just stop running and let me catch up. I'm not gonna do that. I keep running and I get to the street on the corner where I can like run across the crosswalk to get back to the neighborhood. And I'm sitting waiting at the crosswalk because it wasn't a busy street, but the time of night it was. It was just like all the parents were getting home from work. Everybody was heading on home for dinner. So this road was busier than it usually is. And finally, some cars stopped and I start running across the street. And as I'm running across the street, I hear him way down the road on the other side telling me not to cross the street because that's not fair. Bro, you want to beat me up. It's not about fair at this point, you know? Call me confused, but I've always never understood that logic. Oh, yeah, well, they were fighting and that wasn't fair. Well, they're fighting, man. Like, it's not really about fair at that point. If you want to beat me up, I'm going to cross the street if you don't want me to cross the street. I'm going to do the opposite of what you want me to do, especially if I know I'm going to lose the fight. The kid was a year or two older than me. Like, what, are, what am I going to do? Angrily attack him with the wrath of a small child? What? That's not going to do anything. 
Anyways, I get home. My mom's like, how was the park? I say good. I'm not going to say anything. If I told them what was going on, there's no way I'm going to be allowed to go back to the park. So I just went to my room, played PlayStation, actually the original LEGO Star Wars game. It didn't even have like all the episodes. It just had the original three. It was old, but I played that and uh, had myself a great night and I had school the next day. And I get to school and most of the kids in my neighborhood went to that school as well. And one of the kids who lives in my neighborhood walks up to me and says, Hey man, I was at the park last night and this guy was looking around for somebody and it kind of sounded like you. Did you break somebody's stick last night? And I look at him confused and I'm like, what are you talking about, man? Uh, I was at the park last night, but how did you know about this? Because I didn't see you. He had gotten to the park after I had left and gone home. And apparently Sauerkraut Kid had started going up to everyone trying to figure out who I was because he was so mad about that stick being broken that he was like gonna get revenge on me, dude. And I really don't understand why he was so angry. Literally, I broke the stick he was trying to poke me with after he was poking it with dog poop. If it meant so much to him, why was he trying to poke it with dog or poke the stick? You know what I'm saying. Use that stick for dog poop if it's a good stick. Like, I don't know if it was some sentimental object. It seems weird to be using it to hit dog poop. But he's out here trying to seek out intel like the CIA on a South American dictator to replace him back when they were doing that in the 80s. Just going way above and beyond, trying to figure out where I live, dude. My autobiography, he wants a, a, a manuscript of the entire shebang. But it gets even better, obviously, because some people live in the area. Some people knew, like, oh, that sounds like Ryan. So when some people said that they knew who I was, he started trying to hire them like a bounty hunter. And their job wasn't to hurt me or anything. It was to make me fix the stick that I had broken. I don't know what the logic there is, bro. You're gonna send like a bounty hunter over to my house, knock on the door. Hey, is Ryan there? We're bounty hunters, we're looking for him. My parents would have been like, he's eight, no. But even if the bounty hunters tracked me down, dude, Django Fett himself kicks in the door at 3 a.m., runs up to my room, screaming at me, you idiot, you broke this stick, throws it at me, now fix it. I would look at him and say, Django, Mr. Django, sir, first of all, huge fan of the armor. Mandalorian's like the only good Star Wars series Disney has done. Great armor, great story. But uh, I, I don't have the ability to mend nature. I don't have magical powers. Because even if you put a bounty hunter on me and they, they manage to, to catch me, man, I'm elusive. I'm out there. Good luck. I, my dad probably would have been really mad if someone tried to kidnap me back in the day. It doesn't give me magical powers. I can't mend items from nature. I'm not a druid. I, I can't summon my ancestors from the earthly kingdoms to come fix this stick for me. I, I'm really out of luck, bro. But he was going above and beyond. And as for what he was going to pay them, it wasn't money, of course. No, no, no. It was going to be in respect. Has to be the worst way to try to get someone to do something for you. Oh, I'll pay you in respect. Yeah, uh, guess what? Respect don't pay the bills, man. When I go to pick out a pack of Pokemon cards, I can't tell the cashier, oh, I'll pay in respect. Either way, the kid in my class who was letting me know about this just wanted me to be careful if I went back to the park because the kid who was looking for me seemed really mad. And I get it, he was just trying to be a good friend. And uh, I, I did appreciate the heads up, but I was not about to stop going to the park. Probably dumb. Kids are dumb. I was dumb. So I probably should have been like, oh, maybe I should tell my mom. But in my head, I was like, I'm not going to tell my mom because she won't let me go to the park anymore. And B, I'm not going to stop going to the park because I've got to have somewhere to pretend to be a Jedi. All right. Like there, there's certain things that have to happen. And my priorities when I was eight years old was very much at I'm going to go to the park regardless. It doesn't matter. Even if there's a forest fire there, I'm going to go. Uh, but I did think it was at least flattering that he wanted to hire a child bounty hunter on me. Coney 2020 12. 2020, 2012, Coney 2012 would have been proud of him. He would have been like, oh, you're trying to recruit a child army? That's exactly what I did. It was a little flattering, you know? Uh, I don't think anyone really took him up on the offer. As I said, he was trying to pay them with respect. But I did end up going back to the park, and I can say, funnily enough, that it was not my last run-in with Sauerkraut Kid. Either way, last time I saw Sauerkraut Kid, he was trying to hire people to come after me for the broken stick, so I was just kind of a little bit more paranoid than normal when I was going to the park, but on this particular day I wanted to go, I was gonna go hang out with my friends and have a lightsaber battle. So I grabbed my plastic lightsaber, you know the ones that you can get from Walmart that's just like the plastic tube that you can flick out? 
I, I grabbed that and I start going to the park to meet my friends at the playground. And uh, I didn't think that like my plastic lightsaber was as good as bear mace or anything, but in my head I thought that if Sauerkraut Kid comes off to, or after me, I can just smack him with a lightsaber, because if you've ever been smacked with one of those plastic lightsabers really hard, like, yeah, okay, it doesn't make you need to go to the hospital or anything, but it's certainly not pleasant. Pleasant. Oh my goodness, my voice is not working right now. I'm sorry, it's gonna get better from now on. I'm going pro mode. So I start walking to the park, and I don't think I'm gonna bump into one, but I'm feeling okay even if I do because of my lightsaber, and I assume that Sauerkraut Kid isn't there because I don't see anyone in the field, and that's usually where he would hang out. And uh, I start walking across the grass to the playground, and on the right-hand side of the grass, there was this tree line. And out of the tree line, I see Sauerkraut Kid walking out. And he's not paying attention to me, so I just kind of keep walking, hoping he won't realize who I am, because I'm just not trying to have another interaction. After that first one, where he basically, like, was threatening me and trying to chase me around, hiding in the slide, stalking me, he wasn't number one on my list of people to see again. So I start walking, just gonna let him go out into the field, do what he wants to do, play with some dog poop again, whatever he's got going on. But as I'm past him, so he's behind me now, I hear him scream out, STOP! And I'm not a mathematician, I don't know what the odds are that he's yelling at me, but I'll say this, there was no one else in the field. I look over my shoulder a little bit, he's looking at me, so I'm assuming he's yelling stop at me, and I'm not planning on stopping. Obviously, if someone you don't want to talk to starts screaming at you to stop so they can talk to you, the last thing you're going to do is stop, so I just turn around and start walking faster. And when I start walking faster, he yells out to me again and says, freeze. And of course I don't freeze because you're not a cop. There's no reason for me to freeze. And now I know you want to come after me. It kind of reminded me of the first time I interacted with him when he was like, hey, don't do that. Yeah, okay, when you're chasing me saying you're going to attack me, I'm not really worried about what you want me to do. So I don't freeze and I hear footsteps coming up to me faster. So I start running. And uh, as those of you who saw part one would know, I'm a little bit faster than him. And instead of going to the slides where I ran last time, I know that my friends are going to be at the park. So I start running over there and I hear him gaining on me a little bit. And it just so happens that there was this part coming up where you had to like open this fence gate thing. And I knew that when I went to do that, he was going to catch up to me. And I'm not stoked about it, but I literally had no other option. So as I start approaching this gate thing, I like take out my plastic lightsaber. And I don't think it's going to do a whole lot, but I turn around and I tell him to stop. He doesn't seem too scared of it. I'm not going to say I blame him for that, but he starts getting closer. So I do what anyone would do in this situation when you've told someone to stop and they don't stop and you've got a plastic lightsaber. And I just start schwacking him with it. And uh, those things can hurt if someone's really going. I'm not saying I was the strongest little kid, but I was hitting as hard as I can. And that was probably a mistake, because instead of scaring him away, it was like I just made him angry. It'd be like if a bear attacked you and you didn't have bear mace, so you just sprayed him in the eyes with bug spray instead. Now you just have a pissed off bear coming after you. So at this point, I'm kind of pinned up against the gate, and uh, he tackles me to the ground once the lightsaber doesn't really do anything. And he's bigger than me, so it's not hard for him to take me to the ground, but as soon as I hit the ground, I just start thrashing around like a Tasmanian devil. For those of you that have ever played Crash Bandicoot before, you know the move when he like spins in a circle and punches everything within reach? That's kind of the attack I'm going for. I'm just swinging my fists around. And he's trying to pin me down, and he's like growl talking. I don't know if that makes sense. You know when someone's really mad and they're talking through gritted teeth? And he says how much he hates me, and I owe him for breaking his stick the last time that I saw him. Keep in mind, this is the guy who's angry that I broke the thing he was chasing me with to, like, hit me with dog poop. He was poking dog poop with this stick and then chased me with it. Anyone in that situation's gonna break it. But whatever, I don't really know what to do in this situation, but I'm starting to realize that there isn't much for me to do, so I start fighting a little bit dirty. Not saying it was the greatest idea, but I start just kind of pinching him to try to get him to let go. And I pinch him really hard and he lets go for a second. And as soon as he lets go, I kind of pop up and just start running towards the park. I get the gate open, start taking off. And I think I got away. And I'm not going to get cocky or anything because I'm not trying to get caught. But I'm just sprinting towards the park and I don't really hear him. 
And I hear him scream no, and I hear the gate open, and I don't hear any footsteps or anything. But the next thing I feel is like a hand around my ankle. And I realize that this guy must have done like the Madden dive when someone's breaking away for the touchdown and you've got one last chance to try to tackle him. He must have done that to get out there and get a hold of my ankle. But he grabs it and pulls it back and physics does what physics does and I kind of slam onto the ground. And so I get up and he won't let go of my ankle. So I start like pulling on my leg to try to get it out of his hand. And you would think at this point, I don't know, maybe he'll like get up or something. But in the moment, he must not have been thinking. And Sauerkraut Kid, who still smells like sauerkraut, by the way. It wasn't even just like a bad day for him the last time. This is just how he smells. Decides the best thing to do is to bite my ankle. So he just opens up wide. I didn't smell his breath, thankfully. I'm sure it would have smelled like beans and sauerkraut. And just takes a chunk out of my ankle. Not literally. He's not like a Tasmanian tiger. He's not a literal tiger. But he does bite me pretty hard. He didn't take a chunk out of me. It didn't break the skin. But it's enough to make me go, ow, ow, ow. And I'm close enough to the park that people can hear. So I see people looking. And at this point, this guy's biting my ankle. I don't really know what to do. So I just keep yelling. I don't care who comes over, the FBI, a parent, a group of kids. I, it doesn't matter. Just someone come help me. And I see a few of my friends, so I wave, and they start coming over. And there was a group of moms who were there with, like, younger kids. Like, I I'm talking, these kids can't even talk English yet, you know? They're just sitting there, baba, goo goo, baba, gigi. So they're doing that. And so that group of moms starts coming over. My friends come over, and my friends come over. And they're screaming at him to let go of my ankle. Because he's still biting my ankle, dude persistence on that guy. Last time I saw him, he kind of stalked me around the park for a while, made me take the tube slide escape. This time, his persistence was in making sure that I got a good dental match imprinted on my leg. If I would have gone missing, the cops would have found me and been like, yep, well, we got the dental records of whoever did this and printed on his ankle. Regardless, my friends come over and they start yelling at him to let go, and he's just not. I don't think he was really afraid of my friends because it's just a bunch of kids, and my friends probably would have pried him off my ankle. They wouldn't have done nothing. But as he's ignoring them, that group of moms pull up, and when you're a kid, nothing is more terrifying than, like, a group of angry moms. And they start screaming at him to let go. What's wrong with him? Why would he do that? Because I think they could tell from the look on my face that I was not having a good time. And it's just insane to see someone bite someone. So he lets go and I run over to my friends. And I'm standing with them. Not too thrilled about the situation. But I also don't want them to like tell my parents. Because my parents aren't going to let me come back to the park. And the lady is like, why would you bite him? What's wrong with you? And Sauerkraut Kid starts trying to get me to cover for him, which is a horrible idea. I, I get he's afraid of getting in trouble, but you can't really attack me and bite me and then try to use me to cover for you because I'm just not going to do that. Anyway, Sauerkraut Kid starts trying to play it off and be like, oh, we were just friends. We're playing. Keep in mind, I have a huge red mark on my ankle now where his teeth have been just biting me for a while. And usually in this situation, I, I would say don't snitch. And I didn't snitch, but I wasn't going to let him say we were friends. And so I start being like, dude, I don't know you. We are not friends. And he starts looking around being like, dude, come on. Stop playing with me. You know we were just goofing. That didn't feel like goofing to me. I, I don't know. I don't know if it was being tackled, uh, the being like attacked, or the being bitten. All of those things don't really feel like goofing around to me. Call me nuts, but I prefer my friend treat me like strangers and not attack me. Whatever, though, he starts trying to play it off, and I'm not really having it. And the ladies are just kind of standing there watching us argue back and forth, kind of like a Wii Sports tennis match. Just no you, no you, no you, no you. And finally, I'm like, man, you've done this twice now. Do you know how annoying that is? And at that point, the ladies scream out. They're like, he bit you twice? And so I do clarify that, like, no, he hasn't bit me twice. But twice now, I've been trying to hang out at the park, and he's just caused problems. And at that point, they want to go mind their business. They bit off more they can chew. So they're like, all right, we'll just play nice. Yep, that'll do it. Peace rates are, are across the nation sky high. Why didn't we think of that? We should just go to Russia and be like, guys, play nice. Play nice. Let's just be nice. And they'll be like, oh, you guys are right. We all should just be friends. So they leave. And at that point, he kind of walks away with his head tucked between his legs, his tail tucked between his legs. 
not his head tucked between his legs. Like, you know, he's walking away, but he wanted to keep an eye on us. So he's just got his head tucked between his legs. Not like that, but literally like dejectedly walking away. That's probably the better word for it. So he's kind of walking away, seeming like he's going to leave us alone. And my friends are all around and they're kind of excited about it. Dude, that guy attacked you and we saved you. Blah, blah, blah. It's so cool. And uh, I'm not trying to crap on their parade. I'm still trying to play Star Wars. So we start kind of playing the game that we had planned on playing. And we're having ourselves a grand old time. And the way this playground worked, there was like two main stages that were raised like five feet off the ground. But underneath them, you could still kind of climb on the support beams. And so we were all playing down there and we were just having like lightsaber fights. And because we're all friends... The rule is don't smack each other too hard. It's just not a very good idea. It's just everyone's going to get hurt because it's not like if you smack someone really hard, they're just going to say, ow, that hurt. Don't do that again. No, they're going to smack you back. And then you're going to be mad that they smacked you for an accident. So you're going to smack them. We all know that it's just how it progresses. So we're all being really gentle, and one of the guys had brought a few extra of, like, the plastic lightsabers just in case people wanted to play, and we had left them over by this bench, and so me and my friend are having a lightsaber fight, and we're doing it gently, and I hear the guy that brought all the extra lightsabers be like, dude, you have to ask, you can't just take it. And so I look to see what's happening, and Sauerkraut Kid now has a lightsaber. Not only does he have a lightsaber, it happens to be red. That's just luck, but he's also a bad guy. If you're not a Star Wars fan, you don't get why that's funny. But he kind of starts walking at me, and I can tell by the look on his face that he's about to try to hit me really hard with a plastic lightsaber. So I kind of, like, walk away from my friend, and he runs off. And Sauerkraut Kid just starts running at me. And he doesn't have it out yet. I could just see it was red based on, like, the top of it. And the way that these plastic lightsabers work is you pull the button down and you just flick your wrist. It's really, really simple. But he runs up to me and starts trying to, like, get it out, and he can't. And I'm just looking at him, and I say, why are you so obsessed with me? Because at this point, it's just starting to be weird. Every time I come to the park, the entire time I'm here, he's just either watching me or trying to fight me. And he says, I'm not obsessed with you. I'm just challenging you to a fight. So we both have our lightsabers, and he finally, after struggling with it for way too long, gets his lightsaber out. And I'm like, all right, but just don't hit too hard and I won't hit you too hard. I don't even know why I thought he was going to follow that rule. That was pretty stupid of me. As I said, I was uh, like two or three years younger than him and I was a little kid. So in my mind, once someone says they're not going to hit you very hard with the plastic lightsaber, you just won't do it because why would you do that? And he smiles and he agrees and we start going. And the first time I get smacked is like on the right shoulder. And I realize that he's not going to stick to our agreement to not hit each other very hard because that hurt. So I start kind of like backing up just because he's bigger than me. Like there's only so much I can do. And he's just kind of walking at me, swinging it over his head like a baseball bat. And so I start taking my lightsaber and I just start whacking him in the ribs on the side as hard as he's trying to hit me. And he keeps getting madder. And so he just starts trying to like really swing the lightsaber way too hard. And I don't know if you've ever watched someone be in a fight where, like, they just feel like punching as hard as they can is what matters. Obviously, in a fight, you want to punch hard. But if you've ever seen someone get in a fight and they're just throwing haymakers and it's, like, such a dramatic punch that there's no way the person's going to let themselves get hit. And, yeah, it's powerful, but they're never going to hit anyone. He's doing that equivalent with this, like, plastic toy sword and just swinging it. And I'm just kind of backing up. And we're getting near this point where I know that there's a pretty steep hill coming up. So I turn around and I just start running up to where this steep hill drops off. And when I say steep hill, it's more like, uh, what, what is it? What's the opposite of steep? Angular cliff? Like, it's more of just a straight drop off than it is a hill. You're not going to plummet like 40 feet straight down. But if you fall off the little like three foot ledge, you're rolling down the hill and you're rolling fast. And I start running, and I hear Sauerkraut Kid start screaming that I need to stop running away from him, and blah. And I'm not gonna stop running away from you, because he's just bigger than me. Like, there's not much I can really do. I'm not gonna take him in a one-on-one -on -one fight. I already know he's willing to bite me, and on top of that, he's just, like, double my size. There's, there's only so much you can do when the person's just twice the size of you. Imagine being a six-foot-tall guy, and then some dude that's, like, 12 feet tall starts trying to pick a fight. He probably wasn't literally double the size. But some guy that's nine feet tall starts trying to pick a fight. You just don't really have good odds. But I know he's mad at me, so he just starts chasing me up the hill. And I run to the top where that little ledge is. 
and I jump because what my thought was is if I jump off this little three foot ledge and I land straight and then back up against the wall, I won't roll. So I do that and it just happens to work out. There was like eight and a half inches of just flat right at the top where the ledge was. But I hear him running and I don't hear him slowing down. And I'm not saying this was my plan because of course that would be mean. But when he comes running up and keeps running and doesn't have time to stop himself before he starts rolling down the hill, I might have giggled a little bit. And that's exactly what happens. He like runs off and hits the hill. And he's not going to roll hard and like break his bone, but he just kind of had to embrace it. And you know how kids roll down like a grass hill? He just does that and he starts rolling. And I'm watching him roll down the hill and it's not like we had an insane lightsaber fight. I literally ran away. But I'm having a little bit of a moment as I'm watching him roll. I'm like, this is what Obi-Wan felt like after he beat Anakin on the lava planet. Mustafar was crazy. Like, I'm just having myself a little Star Wars moment because, I don't know, little kids, you just got a big imagination. So I go back to my friends and I say, look, I'm gonna go home because that kid just keeps trying to fight me and whatnot. And I, he just chased me up the hill. He rolled down the hill. I'm just gonna leave because I don't want to keep dealing with this. And my friends are like, okay, yeah, yeah, all right, we get it, man. And the kid who had brought all the lightsabers says, well, where's the lightsaber that he took? And I'm like, I don't know, man. And he gets a little mad at me. Well, you let him take the lightsaber? Dude, I didn't let him take anything. You're the one who left him by the bench. If you don't want people to take it, don't set them out and say, anyone take one if you want one. And on top of that, when he's chasing me, I'm sorry that my number one priority was getting away. It wasn't really my friend's plastic lightsaber that cost $12. Yes, that's a fortune to a little kid. I'm not denying that. But at the same time, like, I'm not, I'm not going to politely ask him to give me the lightsaber and then roll down the hill so I can get away. So whatever. We're arguing for a bit, and I decide to leave, so I start going across the field. And by the time I'm halfway across the field, Sauerkraut Kid has now gotten back up the hill over to where my friends are. And the only reason I know that is he starts screaming like, where's Ryan? Where's Ryan? At this point, he had learned my name. We've, we've encountered each other like three times now. Where is he? Where is he? And my friends are like, he went home. And Sauerkraut Kid has also deducted at this point that I live this direction because I always come across the field. So he had a white shirt on and most of my friends had jackets on. So it just looked very distinctive. And I start watching this white t-shirt just come sprinting over to the field where I am. So I take off to the corner just because I'm already out of energy. I've been running the entire time. I'm not trying to deal with this. So I get back across and I cross the street. And that must have been where he like was no longer allowed to run and have free reign because he stopped at the corner and started saying that next time I came to the park, there was going to be issues and blah, blah. And of course, little kid me is like, all right, man, whatever, I'm going to be back. Oh, I don't care. And I did end up going back and we did have another interaction. But that was the second time I interacted with Sauerkraut Kid when he tried to like come attack me with a plastic lightsaber. But he was just this weird kid who really did not like me for some reason and was just like obsessed with making me pay even though I didn't really do a whole lot. And uh, after the second incident where me and him had gotten into that huge like plastic lightsaber fight at the park, I decided that I was gonna just take a little break from going there. And on the other direction of my street, there was like a park if you went out of my neighborhood to the left, but on the right, if you kept going that way, there was just this big desert lot. There's a bunch of houses there now, but at the time it was like during the, the economic shutdown thing, 2008, 2009-ish. So it was going to be houses, but they just hadn't started building it. The company had gone out. So it was just these huge dirt lots that were perfectly flat. And all of the neighborhood kids had started building bike jumps over there. And I was always more of a skateboarder, but I had a bike. And uh, I had a few friends that were into the bike jumps. So instead of going and hanging out at the park every day, I started going over and hanging out at these bike jumps. And we would just take some shovels, build a ramp, jump the ramp, like pretty typical stuff. I don't know. I feel like most people have probably done something similar at some point. And usually everybody that would come over there and help us build ramps and whatnot was pretty cool. It was a different crowd than the people that would hang out at the park. But everyone was really, really nice. And uh, I started getting more and more into it and spending more time there building ramps and whatnot. I didn't love jumping the bikes as much as I just loved building the ramp. I know that sounds dumb, but I would be like, ah, there's no way anyone could jump this. Just build some stupid stuff and then they would do it. It was fun to watch. But one day somebody says that they're going to invite this guy and they say the name and I immediately recognize it as Sauerkraut Kid. I'm not going to say his name. 
But, you know, at this point, I knew him relatively well, considering every time I tried to go to the park, he would chase me around and challenge me to combat like it's some weird 1800s uh, Congress session and he's challenging me to a duel. I love when people try to be like, oh, people these days have such differing opinions and can't get along. You know, back in the day, on the floor of the Senate, people could just challenge each other to a duel. They used to just beat each other with canes. I'm not saying everything's great right now, but, I mean, people definitely can tolerate opinions a little bit more than they used to when they would challenge each other to duels to the death for it. And if Sauerkraut Kid had his way, he would have definitely challenged me to a duel to the death, too. But I just was avoiding the guy, so when they said they were gonna invite him out, I kind of told him that, like, yeah, that guy's got issues with me for some reason, so I, I don't want any issues, so I might not come hang out that day. And they're like, nah, man, he'll be cool, he'll be cool, don't even worry about it. We talked to him about that, and he said that he's over it. Oh, he's over it. I, I don't know why the language they use bugged me so much. Keep in mind, this guy had been chasing me for days, trying to physically attack me because I broke a stick he was trying to hit me with that had dog poop on it. I'm glad that he got over it, that's awesome, but there was nothing for him to get over. He was the weirdo who like held onto this beef for weeks and weeks and weeks while I was just trying to do my thing. So I kind of tell him like, well, I'm glad he's over it, but I don't really like hanging out with the dude, so I'm just not going to come hang out tomorrow then. And they're like, no, come on, man, come on, don't be like that, just come hang out. And usually peer pressure in this situation, like, wouldn't work, but I wasn't necessarily afraid of Sauerkraut Kid as much as it was just annoying. So the more they talked to me and were like, nah, he won't do anything, the more I was like, all right, well, then whatever, yeah, I'll come. I just, like, won't really have to interact with the guy. It's not like I have to go out of my way to ask him how his day was, help him with his math homework. So the next day comes and I go and sure enough sauerkraut kid is there and he still smelled. I don't know if it was something in his body wash or something. The first time I met him and he smelled like sauerkraut, I thought, eh, just a weird day, you know, maybe he just like ate something off for dinner. But that was just truly his stench. I, I don't know if they went to like some weird store and got kraut body wash. I, I heard the Germans love sauerkraut deodorant. That's a joke, okay? Either way, he still smelt very sour, but I see him, and he looks at me and gives me just this creepy smile. And I don't know if it was like an attempt at a friendly smile or faking a friendly smile, but it just gave me a weird vibe. You know when someone smiles at you, but like their eyes look angry, but they're smiling, so it just kind of looks like someone about to turn to the dark side? That's the look he gives me. And so I just give him a head nod, I don't really smile back. And he's like, you know you still owe me, right? And I'm pretty confused, because I thought they said this was over it. So I look at him and I go, nah, I don't, but that's funny. Thinking, I don't know, maybe he's trying to make a really bad attempt at, like, a joke. And he says something about how, like, he knows that I haven't been going to the park because I want to avoid him. And so I say, yeah, because you're just always creepily following me around the park trying to fight me. And at that point, everybody else kind of is like, all right, guys, relax, relax. And I just say that I'm gonna go home. And my friends are like, no, dude, don't go home. Don't go home. Come on, just, just relax a bit. And one of my friends, like, wanted to go talk over there. So I go over there to talk with my friend. And because it's, like, a bunch of people right there, I just leave my bike next to my friend's bike that I'm going to talk to, and we go talk. And as me and him are talking, he's like, bro, come on. Like, you just gotta be the bigger man and just get over it. I'm nine, by the way. There's no being the bigger man. Like, obviously now, I don't think I would have reacted that way. But I was nine years old. There was no being the bigger man. I didn't want to be around the kid who kept trying to beat me up. And even now, if you attack me, I'm not ever going to want to hang out with you again. You attack me twice, I'm really not going to want to hang out with you again. But as we're talking, having this conversation, people start saying, Stop, stop, dude, what are you doing? And I turn around. And Sauerkraut Kid, that little turd, man, that evil secret agent sent to ruin my life, is on my bike. Keep in mind, he's a few years older than me, so it's way too small of a bike, and he is just taking off. And so I start being like, bro, he stole my bike, he stole my bike, and I run over there, and everybody is like, he just took it, he said he was gonna teach you a lesson, and now I'm pissed. So I start yelling at everybody there, like, you guys said that he wasn't going to do this. Like, this is so stupid. I can't believe you guys would be dumb enough to believe him. I, I was not a very happy camper because my bike is gone. And I wasn't happy because none of them chased him either. You guys know that you all have bikes, right? What, do you expect me on feet to chase down this dude on the bike? The least you could have done is have followed him. 
So I start asking everybody like, all right, well, where does he live? Where does he live? And they don't want to tell me. And that's just annoying because like, I'm not asking where he lives to do anything insane. I'm asking where he lives to just get my bike back. I don't care where he lives, trust me. I'm not like, oh, I want to look it up and see what his zip code is. What school is he zoned for? I don't care. I just want my stuff. And so they start saying no, and I start getting mad at them, and I'm like, starting to uh, hurl some insults around. Nothing insane, just some light Xbox trash talk. Like, you guys need to tell me where his house is so I can get my bike back, or I'm gonna take your bike and throw it into traffic. Like, come on, bro. Like, you, you guys need to tell me where my bike is. So they finally tell me, and I just say, I'm gonna go get my bike. And they're like, you're gonna go alone? Yeah, man, what is he gonna do? Kidnap me? Like, uh, of course I'm gonna go get my bike back. And also, my thought was, Sauerkraut Kid might be a jerk, right? Like, Sauerkraut Kid might be stealing my bike trying to attack me. Something tells me, though, that Sauerkraut Kid's parents are probably not very well aware that he's playing Grand Theft Auto with bicycles out there. Maybe they are. Maybe this is all, like, part of their, uh, their family business. They just steal people's bikes and attack them, and then they sell them. Like, that's the entire gig. But I was going off the assumption that if I went to a sauerkraut kid's house and I told his mom that my bike was stolen, that I was going to get it back. And they're like, oh, you're so brave to go alone. Like, what if his parents are mad at you? And I just wasn't worried about it. And even if his parents were down with their kids stealing bikes for some reason, what, were they going to be mad at me because their kids stole my bike? Like, if they would have done that, then they're just stupid. <laughs> I don't even know what I could do in that situation. If someone starts yelling at you because their kid stole something from you, like, that's just clearly a personal problem. There's no amount of arguing with them that you can fix. But whatever, I go to his house, and uh, as I turn the street, it's like a cul-de-sac, and his house was at the end of the cul-de-sac. So as soon as I turn the corner, I can see into the garage, and I see Sauerkraut Kid in my bike, and he sees me, and he runs over and closes the garage door. Believe it or not, that didn't make me turn around, give up my bike, and say, Ah, oh, well, guess it's his now. He closed the door. That's the rules. If someone steals something and then closes the door when you're trying to get it back, it's no longer yours. So, I know he's home, I know my bike's in the garage, so I do the only logical thing. <laughs> I walk up to the front door, and I just knock on it. And I hear Sauerkraut Kid on the other side telling, like, whatever parent is home not to answer the door, and, like, don't answer it, it's probably just someone trying to sell some stuff. And obviously, the adult that was home was a little bit suspect of that, because how often is your, like, 13-year-old son telling you that, Oh, it's probably those dang window repairman again. They got a weird vibe. It's not like they ever pay attention to what was at the door. At least I didn't. Like, I don't know. I just didn't even go look through the peephole when the doorbell rang because I wasn't answering the door. I was a kid. So uh, the door opens, and it's like this sweet-looking old lady there. And I say, hi, excuse me. Um, I think that your grandson might have taken my bike. And she looks at me, and she looks back, and I see Sauerkraut Kid, and she says, my grandson took your bike? And I give him a chance. I say, yeah, I think it might have been an accident because our bikes look kind of similar, but he might have taken mine. And my thought with that is, bro, I'm talking to your grandma. I will tell her that you stole my bike, but if you just want to give it back and avoid all of this, it was, it was an accident. I didn't want to get the dude in trouble. I wanted my bike back. And I know a lot of you would be like, well, he stole your bike. You should have gotten him a bunch of trouble. It's not like I never planned on getting him back for stealing my bike. I just knew I would have better odds of getting him back if he wasn't grounded forever. So whatever, I give him the chance to get out of trouble, and he doesn't take it. He says, I don't have his bike, I don't know what he's talking about, he's crazy. And I think the grandma could probably just see in my eyes and hear in my voice that I just, like, wasn't really making this up. I don't know how she knew I was telling the truth. Maybe it was because she knew her grandson was, was known for stealing bikes or something. But she says, okay, well, I'll meet you in the garage. So I say, okay, and I go over to the garage. The garage door starts opening, and I see Sauerkraut Kid trying to, like, block his grandma from coming out the garage door into the garage. Literally standing there, arms out, being like, don't go out there, don't go out there. And now she's even more curious. If you want to know how to make sure your parents investigate whatever is going on, I feel like a surefire way is to let them get a little curious and then beg them not to go look. The grandma's already curious about my bike, bro. At this point, you standing there and just being like... Don't go, don't go. That would make me a lot more curious. Maybe other people's grandparents are different, but if I did that on my Oma back in the day, oh, you don't need to look into that. That would have been the first thing she did. 
So she comes out to the garage. She sees me standing there and she goes, well, which bike is yours? And I walk over to it and it's a very small bike. I've had the bike since I was probably like six. I was nine now. I actually did end up getting a new bike like for my next birthday that was a little bit bigger, but it was a tiny bike. Very clearly not the size of her grandson's bike or what it should be. I don't know what size bike he has. I wasn't out there with like a tape measure. Wow, those are some nice 26 inch wheels you got there, pal. I was just trying to get my bike. So I think she could tell it was mine and I say, yep, that's my bike. And she looks at her grandson and says, well, is it his bike? And now he wants to take the chance to, oh, it must have been an accident. So he says, oh, I must have just accidentally taken it. And his parents might have maybe let him get away with that. But I feel like grandmas just have a propensity for not taking bullcrap. And she says, there's no way that you accidentally took this bike because it's like three sizes too small for you. I don't even understand why he stole my bike. I understand the guy didn't like me. But out of everything he could steal from me, a bike way too small for him was just the dumbest thing. What are you going to do? Just keep it in your garage? That's just an insanely petty theft. You're not even going to like sell it or, or use it for anything. You just took my bike to let it sit there because it's too small for you to ride it. That, that is a hefty screw you, Mr. Sauerkraut Kid. I take that personally. But when his grandma calls him out, he starts stammering. Uh, 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 I can explain. And I feel like that's another thing you shouldn't say if you're trying to come up with a excuse or some type of reason is I can explain. Because even movies have just clarified that the second someone says I can explain, there's really not a great explanation for it. Usually at that point, they're just buying time while they try to come up with a good excuse that most likely doesn't exist. And so his grandma just gives him a stern look and says, you need to go to your room right now, young man. And even though he tried to block grandma from coming out the door, he does not argue with her when she says, go to your room, probably for the best. And he probably didn't have any other excuse. He could say, go to his room is his best choice at this point. Plead the Fifth Amendment. I feel like when you're a little kid in trouble and when you're in trouble as an adult are the same thing. Shut up and get your lawyer. And by lawyer, I mean, I don't know, like hire a stuffed animal to represent you with your parents or whatever. But as a kid, your parents and grandparents are basically the feds. And there's nothing good that you can say to them. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. So he goes up to his room, probably to just keep his mouth shut. And his grandma turns to me, super apologetic, and is like, please take your bike, I'm so sorry. And I I mean, it's not her fault, so I tell her, I'm like, it sucks, but I'm not mad at you about it. You didn't tell him to do it, at least I don't think so. And she says, yeah, I don't know what's gotten into him, he's just been going crazy recently, da-da-da-da-da, but I'm gonna tell his parents and, you know, they'll make him apologize. I don't really want an apology. I don't really care about an apology. I'm just glad I have my bike back. So I tell her, thank you so much. Appreciate you helping me with the bike situation. You want to tell his parents, you don't. I don't care. Do whatever you got to do. So the next day comes and I go back to the bike jumps thinking sauerkraut kid is not going to show up there because duh. Everyone was already not thrilled with him after that, because keep in mind, they vouched for him, said it was going to be cool. He shows up and steals my bike. No one was that happy with him. And we're building ramps and whatnot. Everybody had apologized. They felt really bad about the situation. So we're just building ramps. And sure enough, Sauerkraut Kid comes pedaling up on his bike. And I don't know what it is, but something about the way he pedaled his bike just bugged me. That's super petty and specific, considering that, like, I don't know, you don't really see people ride a bike that whole much. But something about the way he did it just bugged me. And the way he's riding and pulls up, you can just tell he's embarrassed. There is something going on that's got him embarrassed. And that was weird because I had never seen him act that way before. Keep in mind, this is a kid that tried to smack me with a dog poop stick and then got mad at me about it. So he was pretty shameless. Like nine times out of ten, making this guy feel any embarrassment was basically impossible. The self-awareness rating was just not there, man. Like, I'm pretty sure this dude could block an ambulance with its sirens on and be like, why won't it get out of my way? Anyways, he walks up to me and the rest of the group and says, hey, I really want to apologize for stealing your bike, which is quite the opener, you know? It's not like, hey, I'm really sorry for uh, accidentally breaking your Nerf gun or like, hey man, I'm sorry for losing that thing you let me borrow. Stealing your bike is a, is a pretty big thing to do, especially when you're a little kid. 
Only because there's so much thought put into it. You know, you had to look at my bike, go, that's not my bike, I should take it. Yep, this is a good idea. Get on the bike, pick the bike up, start pedaling the bike, get all the way home. See me come around the corner, close the garage door, try to hide it from your grandma. Call me crazy, I've got a feeling you just weren't that sorry. And that's okay, you know, like that's at the end of the day, that's your problem. We don't have to be friends, we're not cool anymore, you stole my stuff. But just the way he was apologizing, you could tell you 100% didn't mean it. And uh, it's just, you can't accidentally steal someone's bike. But whatever, I'm like, yeah, okay. I don't say it's okay, but just okay. And he had this backpack on and he takes off his backpack and he starts opening it. And I'm confused on what he's doing because he's just apologized. I don't know if he's about to like show me this jar of sauerkraut and give it to me as an apology, as a token of friendship. I'm not really 100% what is gonna go on. But ladies and gentlemen, it was better than anything I could have imagined. So I guess his grandma had told his parents that he had stolen my bike, and they're obviously not too thrilled about it. I'm not a parent, but I'm gonna venture out and say that if I had a kid and I found out that he was like stealing stuff from people, I would not be thrilled. I would be the opposite of thrilled. I would be what we consider pissed. But instead of like, I don't know, making him apologize, grounding him or whatever, in their mind, the ultimate symbol of an apology must have been a hand turkey. You know those things that you make in elementary school for Thanksgiving? It's a hand turkey and it says, I'm really sorry. And it's not even close to Thanksgiving. I have no clue why he did this for me or what he thought this was gonna do, but he gives this to me and says, this shows how sorry I am. And I just didn't get it, bro. Because like, I don't care about your crafts, man. Don't get it twisted. Your parents are the only people that are gonna ever really love crafts you do. Your grandparents, your aunts, uncles, maybe. But if you like ever give someone a hand turkey as an apology gift, don't be surprised if they don't forgive you. You know what? We were gonna be cool, sauerkraut kid, but this hand turkey, that, that just makes me uncool again. I'm kidding. I don't actually hate hand turkeys this much. It was just such a weird, like, I'm sorry for stealing your bike. Here's a hand turkey. That doesn't undo everything. I'm not now like, oh yeah, man, it's cool. We could be besties. I still am not a giant fan. You still stole my bike, hand turkey or not. But he hands me this hand turkey and says, this shows how sorry I am. And I do what everyone else around does in that situation, and I start laughing. Imagine trying to take this seriously, dude. He rides up all solemn on his bike, looking like he's just got some serious message to tell us. Says he's sorry, pulls out his backpack and gives you a hand turkey that says sorry. Would you laugh? Probably. So we all start laughing, as, as anyone would. And he does not like that, and he starts being like, You know, I made that hand turkey as a symbol of my apology, but if you're gonna make fun of it, then I take it back. And I say, okay, that's fine. And I rip the hand turkey. Hey, you wanted it back, you take back your apology, cool bro, I don't want this thing anyways. Did you expect me to go home and put it on my fridge? Like, I don't know what you wanted me to do with it. But I rip his hand turkey and he's like, I spent so much time on that. I don't care how much time you spent on the hand turkey, bro. So I'm like, all right, sorry, I don't know what to tell you. And he just says that he was right to not like me and, you know, he doesn't apologize and he should have just stolen my bike and his only regret was getting caught. And everybody at that point is like, dude, you suck, just go. So he gets on his bike and goes home, but I don't think that went the way he expected it to. I think his parents kind of did him dirty with that one, I'm not gonna lie. Oh no, just go give him a hand turkey, you stole their bike, they'll totally love it and understand. They kind of set him up for failure on that one, but that's why he still didn't like me. I mean, he stole my bike, obviously, but after that, he even didn't like me more because I ripped his hand turkey. So I had had a string of issues with Mr. Sauerkraut Kid for a bit, and then after that, we kind of avoided each other. He avoided me, I avoided him, and it kind of worked out well. I never had to deal with his issues, I never had to smell him anymore. It was kind of like I was walking on cloud nine. And uh, two years later, I had started getting into skateboarding, and I was spending a lot more time at the skate park. And I had gotten to the point where I knew most of the people that were there regularly. So there was like a group of three kids who would come skate together, there were some older guys who would come skate together. And we all just kind of knew the flow of the park and everybody would just kind of do their thing, stay out of everyone's way. And it was a very chill vibe. I know sometimes I'd like, seems like skate parks in these videos are nuts. It's not 99.999% of the time. It's really cool. 
One day, though, I'm there, and I'm just minding my business in the corner of the skate park, and the corner I'm in is kind of behind the entrance. The way it goes is, like, you come in the entrance, and then the fence goes deeper to the left. So most of the time when people come in, they wouldn't look in that corner, because it was just kind of out of the way. So I see this guy skate in, and he kind of looks familiar. And I realized that it's Sauerkraut Kid just because at this point I had had so many issues with him. I probably could have picked him out of a crowd if there was a lineup. That's him. That's the Sauerkraut Kid. Get deodorant for him. Stat. I don't know what's going on with those pits, but it's rancid. So I'm at the skate park and he comes in and he doesn't really see me, but he goes in over to where these two guys, the two of the three guys that usually hang out, were skating this rail. And they had been skating it for a while, just minding their business. And this guy doesn't even take time to set up his stuff. He doesn't take time to, like, see what's going on at the park. He skates right up to them and just says, move right now. Which I don't think anyone would take very kindly to, but especially if it's someone you don't know and they're just like at the skate park trying to boss you around, the two guys were not that thrilled by it. And it wasn't a, hey man, I'm trying to skate the rail too, is it okay if I like skate it? Or hey, is it cool if I get some time on the rail? I want to skate it now, move. Like, they're not going to respond well to that. I don't think anyone would. Even if you don't skate, if you were walking by something and someone said, I'm trying to get there, move. I wouldn't blame you for just deciding to be stubborn and standing there. So whatever, these two guys, not the type to be talked down to and just insulted for no reason, say that they're not going to move. And then they start being like, what's your issue, man? We've never even seen you before. Not that it matters, but like, why would you come up and be rude to us for no reason? You didn't even take the time to ask us to move or anything like what's your issue do you really think that's a good way to get people to give you what you want just trying to reason with him and what they didn't know is that sour ki kraut kid excuse me did not have the ability to reason that was out the window probably from inhaling his own fumes so much like when you just smell like sauerkraut all the time and it's constantly in your nose i'm sure eventually it just starts to inhibit your thinking the only thing on your mind is the kraut the kraut the kraut but when they say they're not going to move and start trying to reason with them, he just kind of shuts down and folds his arms and says, He's serious, they better move! Which has to be the worst intimidation tactic of all time. I don't know why so many people try to do that. The arm fold makes you look more like a pouty little kid trying to get your way than it does make anyone be like, Oh no, he really means business, guys! You smell like sauerkraut, and now your arms are folded. That's the only difference. If you unfold them, you smell like sauerkraut, and your arms are normal. That, that's it. That's the only thing that changes. But the way he did it was obviously trying to be intimidating. Like, he kind of did it aggressively and said he was serious. And the two kids are not really budging or moving at all because it's just not something that they were interested in. And he's just not intimidating. Sauerkraut Kid had gotten a little bit older over these two years, but for whatever reason, it didn't seem like he had been blessed with growing vertically at all. So he was still the same height. These guys were each a solid foot and a half taller than him, and he's trying to intimidate them. So they kind of say that they're not going to move, and if he keeps trying to threaten them, then they're going to make him move away from them. And it's not like they were trying to cause an issue. They were not thrilled about the prospect of having to, like, push this guy away. But at the same time, if he's not going to move and just keep causing issues, at some point, you got to just get the issue away. I'm not advocating violence, all right? I'm just saying, if someone's in your way saying they're not going to move and they're not going to let you leave, they're impeding your ability to move around, and you can probably push them out of the way and keep moving. So they say they're not going to move again, and his response, arms still folded, is to go, I'm going to teach you guys a lesson. And he unfolds his arm, reaches down for his skateboard, and for those of you that skate, he mall grabs it by the back truck. But for those of you that don't, that's when you take your like hand and you wrap it around the metal trucks on the bottom, and he lifts it up, and he starts pulling it back, and I can tell by the way he's pulling it back, it looks like he's about to use the skateboard as a weapon and hit them. And if you want to get into a fight at the skate park, like, it's already kind of dumb. But it's really, really dangerous to smack somebody with a skateboard. You're not going to teach them a lesson, you're probably going to give them a massive concussion. What is that, dude? Oh, you guys don't want to move and let me skate right here? I'm going to smack you with a wooden board with metal attached to it. Some people that skate are like, oh, I could smack anyone with my skateboard. I don't know, man. You could probably classify that thing as a weapon. Like, if somebody was walking around with a stick that weighed as much as a wooden skateboard with a truck on the end of it, and they said they were going to hit you with it, you wouldn't want to be hit by it. 
So whatever, Sauerkraut Kid is being real sour, and his arm is coming back with this skateboard, and it just looks like he's about to smack them. And I'm close enough where I have the ability to, like, stop it. So I go over there, and I grab the other end of the skateboard. So he's got it back with the truck in his hand, so I grab the other truck as it's coming back, and I just pull it out of his hand. It was not some insane James Bond maneuver. I really didn't have to pull that hard. His grip was not that great on it. And he had held it back for so long because he was like really weak. So he was struggling to lift it back. So it wasn't hard to kind of pull it out of his hand. But I pull it out of his hand and I'm like, dude, what are you doing? You can't smack people with a skateboard. And he turns and it takes him a second. But he recognizes me. And instead of saying like, oh great, it's you again, you know, oh, I've dealt with you before, you're such a pain, why do you always have to try to get up in my business? He embraces the anime vibe he's got going on when he was trying to smack people with a skateboard and just looks at me and says, it's you! He had really turned me into an anime villain, bro, in his arc nothing was the same after he didn't get away with stealing my bicycle. You made my grandma betray me when I stole your bike, and for that, you will pay. Just so angry. And I start trying to, like, reason with him and say, you can't smack people with skateboards, bro. And I make the mistake of letting go of the skateboard at that point, because there's no way he'd be dumb enough to do it again. If I just pulled it out of his hand, he wouldn't try to smack me with the skateboard. But this sauerkraut-smelling dude starts reaching back the skateboard to swing it at me now. Except he's slow again, because he's too weak to really, like, do it quickly. So the other two guys that are behind him now, they grab the skateboard, and this time, they rip it out of his hands and throw it across the skate park. Which might be mean, but we've tried the whole stopping it and giving it back to him thing, and all that did was make him just turn and swing it at the person that just stopped him. So we're not taking chances again. And he turns around and starts trying to fight them after they do that. They're much larger than him, but he's surprisingly, like, good at punching. Sauerkraut kid had to be tough when you smell like that. He's just punching them, man, and they're larger, they don't really want to hurt him, but they end up having to, like, just push him away and kind of stop him, I guess? I don't know how to explain it. They weren't pinning him down, but they were just pushing him in a way that made it so he had to focus on being pushed and not anything else. And he starts saying that he's really mad and we shouldn't have messed with him because now he's mad. And I don't know why he thought we didn't realize he was mad. If someone starts coming at me trying to swing a skateboard and hit me in the head, I'm going to know you're mad. I would be really concerned if you weren't mad. Like, that would be some straight-up psychopathic behavior. It is some straight-up psychopathic behavior, don't get it twisted. But if that was what you did when you were happy, oh, I'm having a great day, I'm gonna go take a hammer around. Like, what's wrong with you, dude? That's some serious weirdness. So he's telling us that he's really mad, he's really mad, and we just keep going, dude, we don't care, you can't hit us with a skateboard. Like, we don't care. I don't know if he was trying to tell us that he's really mad so we had to go along with it and let him hit us with a skateboard or what, but he just kept repeating it over and over again. And when I say he's mad, that's not just doing it justice. Some people get mad, they start yelling, some people might turn a little bit red. This guy was at that point of anger where he was screaming so hard that like his voice box was giving out and making it sound hoarse. When you're going like this! That's how mad he was. And on top of it, as he's screaming, freaking out, he's starting to spit with every word he's saying. Like all the spit is con like conglomerating in his mouth and just flying out as he's screaming at us about how mad he is. And so we just keep telling him to relax and relax, and he won't calm down. So we try to go to the other side of the skate park. Just get away from the situation. We're not going to, like, keep arguing with him if he's just going to keep getting angrier and spitting. So we go to the other side of the skate park, and we're talking about how weird it is. And he comes back up with his skateboard. And the second he comes around with his skateboard, we are already on alert. He's already tried to hit us with the skateboard. We don't want to be hit with the skateboard. That's not on my bucket list. But he saunters up to us with this skateboard, and we're all just intensely watching him, kind of scared of him. And instead of looking sheepish or embarrassed at all, he seems fine, and he just starts talking. And you would think the thing that has to come out of his mouth if he's gonna come up with this much confidence is, Hey, I'm really sorry, that was super out of pocket of me. I don't expect you to forgive me, but just so you guys know, that's not how I usually act. Th that's the confidence he's walking up with. But that's not what he says. There is no apology. He just starts trying to have like a casual conversation about how he was really looking forward to spring break. And yeah, I was looking forward to spring break too. Don't get it wrong. I don't think anyone likes going to school when you're younger. 
But that being said, I wasn't trying to have this conversation with a dude that literally just tried to knock me out with a skateboard. I wouldn't want to have that conversation with most people. It's just kind of small talk, and small talk can be so boring it makes you want to, like, get hit with a skateboard. But I really was not about to have this conversation with someone that I did not like at all. Not only because he had stole my bike before, but now because he had tried to smack me and two friends with skateboards. And so the two guys that I'm standing with look at him and literally say, what are you doing? Please go away. We're not friends. Like this whole, hey, I'm going to come over and make small talk thing. We don't want to do that with you. We are not your friends. We're not going to be friends. We can't kick you out of the skate park. We get that. You know, that's not what we're about. But don't come talk to us. Like, we want to stay as far away from each other as possible. And that's pretty reasonable. I think if you try to give someone brain damage, they probably won't want to be around you very often. But you would have thought that we just told this kid that he probably had a contagious form of the bubonic plague and we were going to keep him quarantined for the next 87 years in an airtight chamber. Because he just starts saying that there was no reason for us to be that rude. He didn't understand why we were being so small-minded about the situation. And he just didn't really get why we would be so upset about something. It was just a skateboard. It's not like it would have hurt that much anyways. And yeah, a skateboard is not like a baseball bat, but it's basically the same thing. I don't understand what he meant by that, trying to downplay it. I don't want to be hit in the head with anything. Even if it wouldn't hurt as bad as like a baseball bat wrapped in barbed wire, it doesn't mean that I would want to be hit in the head with it. Whatever, it wouldn't even have hurt that bad. Dude, I don't care if it's a Nerf bat. I still don't want to get hit in the head. I don't like being hit in the head. It's one of my least favorite places to be hit. If I had to have a list of places I enjoy being hit, none of them are preferable, but head would definitely not be in the top five. But we're standing there kind of gobsmacked that he's like insulting us and getting angry with us because if anything, it should be the other way around, right? We were the people that you almost hit in the head. And we all start getting mad being like, you can't really downplay it. You still tried to hit us in the head with a skateboard. We still don't like you. Like we don't want to be your friend. And he goes on another rant about how if we don't have the ability to make friends with people that used to be our enemies, like we're never going to go very far in life. Yeah, that's right. If we don't make up with Sauerkraut Kid, then we're not going to go very far in life. Listen, I'm not friends with Sauerkraut Kid to this day. And, and, while it's not as popping as it used to be, my channel's still cool. And uh, I've just got other stuff going on. I don't really feel like I took the L route. I don't feel like I missed out on anything by not being friends with Sauerkraut Kid. When I'm laying in bed at night, I start thinking about cringy things I've done. And it's never, oh my gosh, I should have never not befriended Sauerkraut Kid. I missed out on so many great experiences. He could have shown me how to smell like sauerkraut. That would have changed absolutely everything. We still say that we're not interested, we don't want to really be around him, and he says that he's going to give us one more chance to forgive him. Oh my goodness, could you believe that he was that generous, guys? He's going to give us a chance to forgive him for him trying to hit us with the skateboard. I never thought I would get an opportunity to be a, a part of something this special. The idea that hundreds of years from now, people are going to talk about this moment in history class as... One of the best symbols of human kindness of all time. The chance to forgive Sauerkraut Kid. But I uh, said no. I said no. We all said, no, man, sorry. We are not really interested in being your friend. You can go skate, do whatever you want. But, like, we don't want to be your friend. We don't want to hang out. We don't want to vibe. We don't want to skate together. We're not interested. And he looks at us so disappointed, man. Like, like a parent that just found out that you got all Fs on your report card, changed them all to A's to trick them, and then got caught. Like, that much disappointment in his eyes. And says that he was really disappointed that we didn't take this time to have some character development. Okay, English teacher, thank you so much. I didn't realize I was a character in a novel. Nothing says I'm the main character like telling other people that they missed out at a chance for some character development. Who are you to say that? Yeah, people do get character development, duh. But to say that me forgiving you would have just added a lot to my, my life story, you know, who I am as a person is just so weird. Hey, if you're not subscribed to the channel, you're missing out on a lot of character growth. And that's serious. There is no sarcasm in my voice right now. So we just tell him, okay, we'll lose out on that character growth. We're perfectly fine with that. And he saunters away and gets about five feet away before he turns around. 
But before I say what happens next, I'm going to be annoying. If you guys go press the like button and comment right now, it will help the video do better. And, and, if this video gets 5,000 likes, I will do part 5, alright? But if not, it's not happening. I'm, I'm compromising for part 4 today. But he turns around when he gets about 5 feet away from us and says that he doesn't even want to skate anymore. The way that we're acting about his offer to forgive him has just totally taken him out of the mood to skate. Okay, none of us really cared, bro. Like, alright, that's not really my problem. If you're mad that the people you tried to hit with a skateboard won't forgive you and now you don't want to skate, did you expect us to start groveling? No! No, sauerkraut kid, please! Please don't leave! We want you to stay in the mood for skating. Hit us in the head with skateboards. If it, if it makes you want to do an ollie, that's all we care about. So we say we don't care. And he's like, you guys are so rude and inconsiderate. I don't even want to be at this skate park. I'm going to leave. And we say, alright man, whatever you want to do. Like, you're more than welcome to do that. If that's really what your heart desires, then go for it. And he does that thing when people, like, do something as a threat, but they don't actually want to do it, but they have to follow through with it. I'm serious, guys. I I'm really going to leave. I will leave. Like, this is your chance. You can forgive me now, or, or I will leave. And we're all like, all right, bro, you can leave. Feel free. You are more than welcome to walk right out of there and skate home. And he gives us another little speech about how we should be so embarrassed that we would let someone leave. Like the fact that we don't have it in us to get over ourselves and forgive him. We never told him to leave. We never once said, you have to leave or we're going to cause problems. In fact, the entire time he walked up to us, we kept saying, if you just go skate over there, we'll stay over here. And like, we'll just stay out of each other's way. No issues, no conflict. Let's just like avoid each other. He wouldn't let that happen. He's the one that made up this imaginary standard that if we didn't forgive him, we were interrupting his skating time, which I don't really care about anyways. I don't think we would be unreasonable if we told you to leave, but, like, it's, it's obviously not our skate park. I don't know. I feel like most people probably would have left or, like, freaked out at you. So the idea that you were holding us hostage and we were making you leave, no one was making you do anything. But he keeps saying that if we forgive him, he'll stay and skate. And we keep telling him that we don't care. Because we didn't care. Nobody that was standing there listening cared. And there were some adults skating on the other side. And he got so annoying saying that we should forgive him that the adults on the other side of the park yelled over, Just leave, bro. They don't want you here. And we were like, yeah, man. And finally, he ended up leaving. So I, at least he did leave. Not with much dignity. Literally none at all. He did the absolute most to make it as painful and cringe as humanly possible. But he did dip. Still not really sure why he thought just walking up to us and trying to start a conversation, no apology or anything, was a good idea. Oh, if I just walk up to him and start talking to them about spring break, then they'll forget the fact that I tried to hit him in the head with skateboards. You didn't hit us, bro. Like, we still had all the brain cells. You didn't do the damage that you were intending to do, so you didn't really get away with it whatsoever. I don't know what Sauerkraut Kid was up to. I don't know what he was planning. It seemed like every time I interacted with him, it was just uh, even more cringe than the last. And, uh, as I said, we're back with part five of the Sauerkraut Kid saga. You guys have been absolutely loving this series, so if you're still enjoying it, be sure to press the like button and let's go. Alright, so last time I saw Sauerkraut Kid was, like, at the skate park when I was 12, 13 years old, and we didn't really have any other incidents for a bit. In fact, I had kind of gone on, got into high school, got through my freshman year, became a sophomore, was doing my thing, living my life, before I even ever saw the kid again. So I was a sophomore and I had a class with like a bunch of seniors and one of them I became friends with and he was throwing a party and he invited me. And like in retrospect, it didn't really matter that he invited me, but at the time I was hyped, bro. A senior invited me to his party. I was stoked. I was ready to rock and roll, go to a real party. And like in retrospect, it really didn't matter, but at the time, I thought it was a pretty big deal. I was hyped, and I had never really been to like a real party before, you know, if you're picking up what I'm putting down. So I was excited, and when I get there, my excitement immediately got swallowed whole, almost like a black hole, just sucked up and destroyed. Because, you know, 15-year-old me didn't really know a whole lot of people at this party. In fact, the only two people I knew were the two people that I recognized from the class that I have. And one of them, the guy who invited me, was the host, so, like, he's mad busy, and I didn't know anyone. And now I would just go around a party and make friends. Like, it's not that weird. But at the time, I was super shy and, like, did not want to go make a fool out of myself. So I'm kind of standing in the corner like an awkward loser. 
I'm gonna roast myself, man. I was being straight up weird. I'm like sipping on a soda pop, standing in the corner, looking at the corner. I, okay, I wasn't looking at the corner. I won't do myself that dirty. But you know, I wasn't going out of my way to initiate conversation with anyone either. And I decide that like, I'm gonna go out of this first room that I had walked into, into a different one. And off of this first room was this huge open room, the living room. And it looked like that had kind of become the de facto dance floor. And then off that was these stairs that you would walk up that kind of overlooked this like living room where everybody was dancing. So I decided to just go upstairs and see what was going on because it looked like there was a loft area where a bunch of people were. So I start going up the stairs and as I am I start looking at this dance floor that's right next to the stairs like that's why it was there so you would look at it. And I'm gonna be honest, I may have been young, but I know cringe when I see cringe, and that dance floor was something foul to have to look at. It should have been a punishment. Like, I feel like a judge could punish somebody to have to watch that dance floor, and it would work as a punishment. That thing was wider than Mayo, bro. I'm not sure what song they were listening to, but they were just not moving to the beat whatsoever. It, it was mad embarrassing, so I go upstairs. And I'm just cringing as I'm walking up the stairs and I get up there and it opens up to my left to this like big loft room. And there's a bunch of people in this like lofty room and uh, it's really crowded. You know that shoulder to shoulder looking crowd where it just looks like it wouldn't even be comfortable to walk in there? That's what I see. So I decide to go to my right into this other room instead of going into the room that's so crowded it doesn't even look like people can breathe very well. You try to take a deep breath, someone pushes your ribs back in, like, Hey bro, stop, you're digging into my sides. So I start walking away, and as I'm walking away, I hear my name. And I have a pretty common name, it's not like a name that necessarily I assume people are always talking to me when I hear it. So I keep walking, but then I hear it again louder, and I turn around, and I see like a dude coming out of this crowd. And I can't really make out who it is. It's a really big crowd. There's a few people coming out. I don't know who said my name or like who's just leaving. And finally, out from the crowd, steps Sauerkraut Kid. Almost like a video game cutscene where the boss steps forward, man. I, I really could not believe that he had managed to find his way back into my life. Last time we saw each other, he was like my age, 15, and I was 12, 13. So now he's either 17 or like an adult. He's way older than me. And I assumed he said my name to be like, hey, good to see you, man. I don't know. I just thought it would be really weird if this grown man had carried over all this beef. I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like if I have any beef with you that's over two years old, it just doesn't really exist anymore. Like, I, I don't know. I just don't care that much. Unless you did something really annoying, I'm just not the type to hold a grudge. And especially if we're talking about stuff that happened when you're like, I don't know, 12. I'm gonna hold it against you when you're 24. That's a little bit absurd. Not that I was 24, but I just assumed by the time this guy was 18, he'd be over some drama he had at 14, 15 years old. But I guess not, because Sauerkraut Kid starts going off on me saying that I'm not allowed to be here. And I'm confused because I don't think it's his house and I also don't think he's the person who invited me. So I kind of tell him that like, well, I was invited by the host, so I don't really care if you want me to be here, I'm going to be here. And on top of it, there's all these people here and he comes up and starts pressing me and it's not like anyone's backing him up. If a bunch of people would have said you got to go, I probably would have left. But just sauerkraut kid coming up to me out of a crowd and saying I have to leave with no one following him. It's like, I'm not going to listen to you, man. If I know anyone's the type to just have a bunch of stupid drama, it's you. But he says that he doesn't know how we feel about that. And he says we in a way that implies there's a group. And as I said, he's alone. So as soon as he says that, I'm like, dude, I don't know who this we you keep talking about is, but you're standing by yourself. And he looks around and genuinely looks surprised that nobody came to back him up. I don't know if in that other room he was with a group of people who were like, yeah, let's go confront that kid right now. But once he realizes he's alone, he turns back and gives me a dirty look and says, like, dead seriously that I'm going to regret it if I don't leave. And he lifts his hands up. And if somebody says you're going to regret it if you don't do what I just said and starts lifting up their hands, I don't know if this is like paranoid of me, but I just assume that means that you want to fight me. 
I really don't think that makes me crazy. I think that would be obvious. But when he says, I've got to leave or I'm going to regret it and starts lifting his hands, I assume he wants to fight. So I start lifting my hands up to like fight him back. And he looks at me confused and says, what are you doing? And I'm like, well, if you're going to fight me, I'm not going to let you punch me in the face. And he says, no, I don't want to fight you. We've got to settle this like men. We have to dance battle. What? What are you talking about, man? You said that I have to leave the party or I'm going to regret it, and you're referencing a dance battle? You want a dance battle, man? What is this, dance dance revolution? What is this, high school musical? Like, who's sitting there having a bunch of beef with somebody, confronting them at a party, and then as they're confronting them says, well, there's only one way to settle this, and then like a sick bass line starts going in the background? And I am just kind of flabbergasted because I'm not Zac Efron. This is not High School Musical. I'm not going to get into a dance battle, and neither are you. You're not Zac Efron either, so I think we're both just going to embarrass ourselves here. But he's completely serious. Like, I thought he was trolling or maybe was just going to try to, I, I don't know, con me into getting into a dance battle so I would embarrass myself. I'm probably giving him a little bit too much credit for thinking that through too much, but... I just assume no one would be dumb enough to actually challenge someone to a dance battle. Unless you're a really good dancer, which neither of us was. I have absolutely zero faith that either one of us would have done anything but embarrassed ourselves. And that's exactly what did end up happening. So I just laugh at him and go to walk past him and go home. I chalk this up to like this entire night being a bust. I saw my friend. I said hi. It was cool. I wish it would have been a bit cooler. But I'm Audi. I'm not going to stick around and have this guy following me around, begging me to dance battle, whatever. And as I go to walk past him to leave the room, he does what I can only describe as like a robotic electric slide over to me and blocks where I'm going to walk and starts doing like these robot dance moves. But not a good robot. I would have given Sauerkraut Kid credit if he was insanely annoying but a good dancer. That's not what was happening. This robot kind of looked like somebody programmed it, but they were eating a Hot Pocket and grease kept dropping onto their keyboard and short-circuiting it because it just kept like moving really weird. It was really bizarre. And I say, hey man, can you move? And he says... You think you can leave after I challenge you to a dance battle? Don't you know what happens if you back down from a dance battle? You can't do that. No, I'm not too familiar on what happens if I back down from a dance battle. I didn't realize there was a set of rules I had to agree to. I also love how he said I can't do that. Like, you can't back down from a dance battle. Was that written down somewhere? Did I miss some weird ancient totem in Egypt that said, like, you cannot leave a dance battle, otherwise you'll be cursed by a demon? But he's looking at me completely serious. And I'm still trying to figure out if this is just some, like, long play troll, if he's gonna try to just make me embarrass myself somehow. But the more he goes on about how, like, we have to dance battle and I can't back down, the more sure I become that he's just 100% serious. He must have spent the last weekend watching those old, like, dance battle movies. What is it? Step Up, you know? Or, like, what's that other one with Channing Tatum where they're doing all the dancing? I don't know if that's the same movie. Oh, yeah? You, you think you own this neighborhood? Well, we'll have a dance battle. And then Channing Tatum just starts, like, spinning on his head, and you're like, what, what was going on in the early 2000s? Some of the weirdest movies were made in the early 2000s. You had movies about dance battles, but let's talk about Spy Kids, where the bad guys in Spy Kids were just bad thumbs. How much acid was the guy who made the script to Sky or Spy Kids on, not Sky Kids? Oh, they're kids who can fly, not Sky Kids, Spy Kids. Think about how bizarre that first movie is. Like, what was he on to think of that entire concept? Anyways, he keeps trying to challenge me to a dance battle, so I do what anyone would do in that situation, and I laugh at him and, like, move past him and start going down the stairs. And I was expecting to be left alone while I'm walking down the stairs. It's not a place to mess around. So many injuries happen on the stairs, man. But he's going behind me like dancing. And at first, nobody's looking. But by the time we're going to the bottom of the stairs, people are noticing and looking. But not in a good way. You know when people are staring more because they're trying to make sure that you're okay, that like everything's all right. They're looking more with concern. That's the look they're giving him because his dancing did look like he might have been having a medical emergency. 
If you didn't know any better, you thought he might have had like some food poisoning going on that had started to deteriorate his central nervous system. It looked like he might have been having like a, a little bit of a seizure maybe. I'm not sure. But whatever it was, it did not look like dancing. And so he's doing this behind me and everyone's staring. And I'm turning bright red because as everyone's staring at him dancing, he's close to me. So everyone's staring at me and I'm like, I'm not this guy's friend. I don't want people to get the wrong idea and think I'm escorting him to the dance floor to really tear it up. I'm just trying to go home. So we get to the bottom of the stairs and I turn left to go to the front door and go home and he goes to dance. And so I turn just to see what he does on the dance floor because I'm not going to lie. Curiosity did kill the cat. I wanted to see what would happen. I was dramatically curious. If it was anything like what he had already been doing, I knew it was going to be embarrassing. And he gets out there and starts dancing. I'm doing air quotes that you can't see because I don't even know if you can describe it as that. Legally, if I described it as dancing, I might be open to like uh, a, a false claims lawsuit. I don't know what that would be called. Just misleading the public or whatever. Because it looked more like somebody being electrocuted. It looked like he accidentally stuck a fork in a socket and just started doing the boop, boop, beep, beep, boop, boop, beep, beep. Like, it, it looked rough. And everybody's watching, and they're not laughing or clapping or booing. They're, they're really just confused. And I think he took their confusion as if, like, they were mystified, you know? Wow, they're literally speechless. They don't even know what to think because I'm tearing up the dance floor so good. Sauerkraut Kid was not huge on self-awareness. I think that's why he smelled like sauerkraut. If you had some self-awareness, you would realize people think you smell bad. That was not there. So he's dancing, and everyone at the party is just kind of staring as he's doing it because it's really weird. It's not very good. And he looks at me, and I'm kind of staring now because I can't look away. It's a little bit like a car crash, like a train wreck. You can't help but just look at it and be like, wow, this is so horrible, but I can't stop watching. And you know that dance move people do where they do the lasso and they throw it at people to like pull them onto the dance floor? He starts trying to do that to me, but angrily, like very clearly pissed off while he's trying to do it. And I'm not playing along with it. Like, I'm just not going to do that. But everyone turns and starts looking at me. And now people start to laugh because they think that we're doing like a comedy bit. I don't know if they thought we were both in on the joke or something, but that's how bad it was that people thought it was a joke. So I turn to leave, but my friend comes around the corner and says, bro, do you know this guy? And I'm like, not really. And he says, well, it'd be really funny if you would just like dance battle him to see how much more he'd embarrass himself. And I would love to say that at this point I said, I'm not susceptible to peer pressure, sir. But I didn't, I didn't. I said, okay, but you have to understand that I'm kidding. And he said, all right. And I go out there and I just am kind of standing there. I'm not gonna dance. I don't know how to dance. I, I think if I tried to dance, I would have embarrassed myself even more. And I don't go out there with the rope lasso thing. He drops that before I go out there. I was not going to go out there while he's doing that. I just refuse. Anyways, him and I are out there and there's like a crowd around us. And he starts giving me this cringe speech about how he's going to destroy me with his moves. And my ego is going to be left permanently bruised. He was doing a whole lot of dancing. But as soon as I stand there, he wants to do like the monologue. It's not the first time he's monologued me either. That must just be his thing. He thinks he's in like a Shakespearean play, an anime of some sort. I will destroy you with my moves. Okay, dude, either destroy me or don't. Like, I, I don't know. I'm just tired of hearing you saying you're going to destroy me with the dance moves. Either do the dancing or don't. Whatever, I'm kind of like, okay, then let's see it. And he takes a step back, tells everyone to move. So everyone takes a few steps back. I take a few steps back. And he goes to do like a head spin break dancing move, which if he would have landed, would have been sick. I don't know how people do that. They really make themselves a human Beyblade and just start spinning. I don't know, man, it's sick. But he fails. He goes up on his head and gets his feet above his head, but he doesn't actually spin. And if you've ever done that, then you just kind of fall. Like, there's no way to really keep yourself balanced. But we're in a circle full of people. So he falls, and he's just falling out of control. And as he's falling, his right foot just smacks into this girl's face. And it doesn't just lightly smack into her face. Like, it smacks her in the face. She had glasses on. They go falling off her face. It looked like they were broken. 
She has a drink, it spills everywhere, and he falls down and pops back up onto his feet and looks around, and everyone's crowded around this girl like, are you okay? She just got kicked in the face by someone that smells like sauerkraut. It's never a position you want to be in in life. Hopefully, at no point in your autobiography do you say that this has happened to you. And people start being like, dude, what's wrong with you? Why would you kick her? Like, why would you do that? And he starts saying, well, it was an accident. It was an accident. And nobody really cares at that point because she's still on the ground, like, holding her face. He kicked her really hard, and everyone's pretty pissed because this guy just kicked her in the face. And he keeps trying to be like, whatever, it's not a big deal, it was an accident. And even if it was an accident, the least you could do is act mortified and go apologize because you're still in the wrong. You still should feel crappy even if it was an accident. You just kick someone in the face. But he keeps trying to act like it's not a big deal. And I'm standing there just mortified by this all. And then people start being like, dude, what's wrong with you? Why would you think that's funny? And I'm like, I don't think it's funny. And they start saying, well, then why were you dancing with them? I'm like, I'm not, bro. Somebody told me it would be funny if I came out here and stood here. So that's what I did. I wasn't dancing with them. And he starts trying to say that, like, I'll back him up. I'll back him up. And everybody on the dance floor is mad. And pretty quickly, they start getting confused and think that I'm with Sauerkraut Kid, that this is somehow a team effort. As if I would ever co-sign people kicking people in the face, I'm gonna say it right now for everyone on YouTube to know. Don't kick people in the face, especially in a dance battle. It's uncalled for. If you're in a karate tournament, you gotta do what you gotta do, I guess go for it. But you shouldn't just kick people in the face and like don't try to bring me down with you, bro. But everybody's all mad and they start saying that we should go, we should go. And he says, yeah, let's go. And he leaves and I'm standing there. And then everyone turns on me and starts saying, you got to go with your friend, man. And I try to clear it up and be like, hey, yo, I'm not his friend. Like, I'm not his friend. And it doesn't really work. So I have to leave. And I walk outside and I'm pretty pissed because I was going to leave anyways. But I didn't plan on being kicked out and being made to feel awkward. Like everyone staring at me while I left. I just planned on walking out. But now, of course, Sauerkraut Kid made it some ginormous event. Felt like I'm in a Roman Colosseum, bread and circuses out here. But I see Sauerkraut Kid and he's like, oh, did you get kicked out too? And I'm like, I didn't want to get kicked out, but you said I was with you. And he laughs and says, fair enough though, right? No, not fair enough, man. I'm not with you. I'm not with you. I had nothing to do with this. You tried to spin on your head and you didn't even have it in, like you didn't have the move down. That's what I don't get. I feel like spinning on your head would be cool in a dance battle, but if you've never done it before, if you have no clue if you're going to land it, why would you try it? That's like somebody saying, oh, I'm going to try a backflip and then just sending it. They don't try it on a trampoline. They don't start on a foam pit. They just backflip right there and break their neck. And you're like, well, why would they have ever thought that was a good idea? Either way, I left, he left, and uh, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, as much as I would love to say this has got 87 more parts, that was the last I saw of Sauerkraut Kid. This has been a fantastic saga. If you've enjoyed it, I'd appreciate you pressing the like button. The last time I saw him was when he challenged me to a dance battle and got me kicked out of a party. I'll probably be putting all these in a compilation at some point in the next month or so, so if you haven't seen them all, I'll be on the lookout for that. But, uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's Sauerkraut Kid for ya. If you did enjoy, press the like button, comment down below. If you don't know what to comment, comment Sauerkraut. And, of course, subscribe if you're new and turn on notifications. If you like listening to the audio version of these story times, I do post them on Spotify, link down below, along with the link to the intro song. And I've been doing a podcast over on my third channel where I just talk about stuff, react to stuff. So if you miss that old style of content I used to do on the other channel, feel free to go check that out on the Scrubbe channel. But yeah, on that note, guys, uh, I'll see you guys next time. Don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot. And I'll see you guys next time. I'm out. Peace.